All right. Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to Dreamforce. My name is Danny Lai. I'm a director of product management with uh, Einstein Analytics. And this is Saranjit Singh. He's a director of customer success. Um, and we're here today to give you some insights into a very powerful construct called bindings and how you can use them to create really rich, powerful, and dynamic dashboards in Einstein Analytics. And as we get started, uh, the first thing I want to do is to thank you. Uh, your success is at the heart of everything that we do. And it's your great feedback that allows us to build the kind of practice we're doing today. So thank you very much for, for your time, and thank you for, for your feedback. Uh, this session is going to be very demo heavy. And everything that Saranjit is going to be demoing is actually readily available today. But I'm still required to put the slide on, because if in our Q&A we talk about some forward-looking product features that are still on the roadmap, be sure to base your purchasing decisions only on what's available today. Um, all right, so for our agenda, um, I'd just like to know a quick show of hands, um, just in terms of experience with Einstein Analytics. Who has implemented a dashboard with Einstein Analytics? OK, a small handful. Um, and anybody muck with the JSON a little bit? OK, sweet, awesome, cool. So what we're going to do, uh, I'm going to start off with a quick high-level overview for uh, Einstein Analytics dashboards and how they can be made dynamic. Uh, we'll segue into why or how bindings comes into the picture when you're implementing these dashboards. Saranjit's going to go deep into a few, of, a few really excellent customer examples on the, the most common use cases for bindings and dashboards. Uh, and then we'll leave, with, leave with behind some resources on things that you could use to help get you started as you implement Einstein Analytics dashboards. So first is uh, just a quick overview for Einstein Analytics dashboards. You know, our philosophy around dashboards is that in order to have your users be able to engage and draw insights from your dashboards, they need to be able to interact with them. Um, and the best way to interact is to allow them to be able to click on any chart or any table or any KPI and be able to drill and to reorganize and discover their own insights based off that data. And so every, every analytics that Einstein Analytics dashboard that you build will have this interactivity built right in. So if your dashboard is based on a single data source, a single data set, this filtering, we call this faceting, is done automatically. Now, you, can, you also have the flexibility, though, if you wanted to uh, query data from other data sources or link different data sources together to create your own data mashup in your dashboard. You, you absolutely have that ability to do that in Einstein Analytics as well. And that type of dashboard could be fully interactive as well. You just have to link those two data sources together using the UI while you're building your dashboard. Again, it's not a really ETL process. It's, it's all done uh, declaratively through point and click, all done via faceting. And there's no bindings required to achieve this type of interaction, this type of automated filtering across the dashboards like, like you're seeing here. As you click on any object, the entire dashboard ref refreshes to show you the new slice of data. And as long as you're doing that using one data set or linked data sets, you can do all of that declaratively using the UI. Now, where bindings comes into the picture, not that kind of bindings, but what, what bindings comes into the picture is if you wanted to go beyond automated filtering and you wanted to be able to create really rich dashboards where you can dynamically set any property of your dashboard. So think about like if you wanted to dynamically swap out a chart type or change a query or change the color of a line or, or personalize your dashboard. If you want to change any property of your dashboard in real time, then you can actually leverage bindings. So some common examples are if you wanted to have a single query string have several and have several uh, parts manipulated dynamically to have like a toggle change the, the kind of grouping you want to use or the, the list of measures you want to show in your values table. You can use bindings to do that. Any of those chart properties in your, any of those properties in your charts or your tables. So if you wanted to change from a bar chart to a map chart, if your grouping changes to a you know, geo-based grouping, you can do that via bindings. If you wanted to change the value of a reference line based on the filters that you set in your dashboard, that could be set via bindings. And these are, all, these are some of the very common examples that you can, you can achieve using bindings. Now, the difference here, though, is that bindings is a programmatic construct, meaning that there's actually coding involved. And that's why I was kind of asked, pulling the audience a little bit around JSON, because you do have to do some coding in order to implement bindings. Because bindings essentially is a string replace functionality. You, you go to the property that you want to set, and you swap out the static value with a binding syntax. So, what I want to do is to kind of give you a quick overview for the, 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 the considerations you need to take when you're implementing a binding. And then we're going to see that in action, because Saranjit's got a whole bunch of pre-constructed dashboards with bindings that he can kind of, show, kind of walk you through. 
But no, the general principle behind bindings is you, you, you first decide on the property that you want to set, and then you have to decide where the value is going to come from. So with the binding syntax, the idea is you can reference the output of any query in your dashboard. We call those query steps. So steps are queries in your dashboard. A binding can reference any step in your dashboard. Now, um, a step could be, could be comprised of uh, lots of different fields. So you can imagine for a, for a particular query, you could be querying a whole bunch of measures and a whole bunch of dimensions. So what you need to do is when you choose that step, you need to decide, well, what part, what component of that step do I actually want to use to set my property? So that's, why, that's how you select the value. There's a set of binding selection functions that allows you to, to specifically choose the field or fields you want to use uh, when you're referencing another step. And then the last thing to consider is some properties take in a Boolean, other properties take in a string, some other properties take in a list of values. And you want to make sure that whatever you're referencing, you're getting that data in the right format so that it matches the property that you're trying to set. So this is best, this is best illustrated with an example. So we're going to just spend the rest of the time now on a demo, and Sarah and G can kind of walk you through some of the most common use cases for bindings. Thank you, Danny. All right, uh, let me jump right into the demo. So first of all, welcome to Dreamforce, everyone. Uh, Danny, thank you so much for providing a great overview of um, what out-of-the-box uh, faceting is in Einstein Analytics and how you can use bindings to uh, take the interaction on your dashboard to a whole new level. And I'm very excited to share some of these very commonly applied um, binding use cases with you. So we have created this dashboard. And I'll start by uh, walking you through what's going on on the right-hand side of this dashboard. Uh, so let's begin from the very top. It says, uh, welcome, Saranjit Singh. That's my name. Uh, so what if somebody, someone else was looking at this dashboard? So this name part of this greeting message is dynamic enough that it can pick up the uh, name of the logged in user and uh, display this uh, personalized greeting. And that is done via binding. So that's the first use case, first application of bindings that you see on this dashboard. Uh, right under that greeting message, we have a text note. So let's ignore, uh, let's ignore that uh, for a second. And then we have a bunch of toggles. Uh, so the very first toggle we have, it says select group. So let's see what happens uh, when, when I select region uh, as, as a grouping. So what, once I click on region, two things have happened. First of all, the grouping on this bar chart, it has changed from division to region. And secondly, the chart type has changed. Earlier, it was a, um, earlier it, it, it was a vertical bar chart, and now it's a horizontal bar chart. Uh, what happens if I click on state? If I click on state, you'll notice the the chart type it has changed to that of uh, that of a map, and the grouping has changed to state. So two things we are controlling uh, as the user interacts with toggle on this dashboard, and this has been done also through binding. The next toggle, it lets you select what measure you want to look at. So right now, it's displaying your attainment by division. Uh, so you can actually see the actual values, or you can see the target values. So this is uh, changing your measure dynamically on your chart. And then we have the sorting option. Let's say if, if you are looking at your attainment of by rep, and you want to see your top performers, you can click on descending, and it will show you the top performers. You can look at bottom performers, click on ascending, or you can just go back to our default uh, sort selection, which is alphabetical order. And one thing I want to highlight, you see, we have only three toggles and one chart, and we are, uh, we are saving a lot of real estate on our dashboard. Imagine um, you know, as many charts as the combination of clicks that we have on this toggle. So that would be like you know, really chaotic if we created a dashboard, something like that. So bindings really uh, let you uh, save some real estate on your dashboard if you look at these use cases. And also, it has taken the interaction of the dashboard to a whole new level. So right under these toggles, what we have is you know, a bunch of list filters. Um, so pretty standard, um, nothing uh, going on in terms of bindings in here. And then under that, we have um, there is a, a number widget that displays the average for the measure that has been selected on the measure toggle. So right now, it's showing you average of um, percent to target for, for all of the reps. And if I select, uh, let's say, division, you'll see this average now, it's only for 
the division grouping uh, that I'm looking at. So that is also uh, dynamic. That has also been done using bindings. And one thing I want to highlight here, let me select uh, one more month here. And you will notice that the, the highlighting of this average, it has gone from green to red. Because there is a benchmark that we have implemented that if the attainment is less than 70%, then uh, it will be highlighted in red. And if it's, um, if it's above 70% or equal to 70%, then it's green. So that has also, so this dynamic highlighting has also been achieved via, via bindings. And then uh, you, you, you also must have noticed that this trend line chart at the very bottom, it had no impact on whatsoever selections we made uh, at the toggles uh, at, at the very top. That's because this is bound only to this list selector that we have created. Uh, um, you know, th this is a custom list selector that we have created. Um, and this, this lets you choose time periods that are applied to that trend line as filter. So right now, by default, it's selected as this year. So if I select, let's say, last year, then you will notice that the filter has changed to last year and without impacting anything else on the dashboard. So the, the, these are some of the commonly applied binding use cases that I wanted to highlight. You saw them in action. And now if you're wondering like what's going on on the left-hand side of this dashboard, well, each and every use case that I outlined, you can actually learn how to implement that uh, in your own instance. So there is a drop down at the very top left that lets you select which use case do you want to look at. So let's say I want to know how do I dynamically switch uh, chart type. So let me select that use case. So at the very top, it provides you a brief description of the use case. Um, and then there is a solution. So if we look at the solution here, and also on the right hand side, it's actually highlighting the widgets that are involved in that particular use case. So if you see the chart type uh, switching, it's related to the very first toggle, which is select grouping and this bar chart. So now, what do we need to do in order to implement that? So I'll, I'll briefly go over this use case uh, with you guys. So first of all, we need to understand. So going back to Danny's slide, things that you need to keep in mind when you are uh, thinking about binding. So first of all, you, you have to know what's the property that you, are that you want to change. So in this case, I want to change the chart type. right? So then you have to identify where in your dashboard that chart type property is controlled for this particular bar chart. So that is the visualization type property uh, that, that has been highlighted uh, in point number one over here. That need to be uh, changed dynamically. So once you have identified that, then you have to figure out how do you generate that value dynamically. So in this case, that dynamic value is actually generated by this toggle. So if the person is selecting region, I am uh, changing the chart type to H bar. If, if, if the person selects state, I want to change the chart type to that of a map. So I have to specify those values. I have to bind those values uh, for these selections uh, you know, in, in this toggle, which is generated by a static step. So we have these instructions here. Uh, you need to prepare your static steps. That will be displayed on your dashboard as a toggle. So let's look at some of the uh, semantics, you know, uh, some of the contents of the static step. You'll see I have a value section here. Let me highlight that for you. And the very first property under each of these values is display. So display, it means what's displayed as a header on the toggle. So we, we've got division, region, rep, and state. Next, uh, we are also specifying a value, which is um, related to you know, another use case when we are trying to switch the grouping type. So uh, we have specified division, region, sales rep, and state. And these are the actual uh, data set fields that we will, we will switch in the grouping section. So if a person clicks on division, the grouping changes to division. So this is the a column value that's used. And then we have another um, property, which is called chart type, that we have um, declared here. And chart type is V bar or H bar or Coroplet. So Coroplet is actually an, another name for the map, which, uh, map chart type that we have in Einstein Analytics. So once you have defined these values, the last step is to bind the selection on this toggle to that of the visualization type property on your bar chart or uh, on the step that you're trying to change. So let's look at this uh, chart one, which is a step in our dashboard JSON. 
And if I go to the visualization type property, let me highlight that for you. So the first thing you'll notice, everything is enclosed within two curly uh, brackets. So anything related to bindings, you have to enclose it uh, between two curly braces, because that tells the, uh, the processing engine, uh, engine at the back end that whatever is uh, contained within these two curly braces, I have to replace it with something, right? Um, but how, how does it identify you know, what it needs to be replaced with? So first of all, we are using a data selection function. So here we are using cell. So we have three data selection functions available currently. The first is a cell, then we have column, and we have row. You can uh, you know, go to the documentation and read more about it. There is not enough time for me to you know, go into uh, each one of those. So we are using cell as the data selection function here. So within that data selection function, we specify the step name that generates the values for us. So if you look at the static step that we discussed, the name of that step is called get groups underscore one. So I have to specify that from get groups underscore one, depending on the selection, right, pick up the value of chart type. So chart type is the property or uh, the variable that I've declared um, in that particular get groups uh, step. So pick, pick that up, and then what you see next is the, the last part is as object. So as object is the data serialization function that I'm using so that it fits well with the property that I want to set. So we have like a lot of data serialization functions. We have as object, as string, as filter, as grouping. Uh, you can learn more about this uh, in the documentation itself. But right now, as object will simply return an array of the value uh, whatever is declared in chart type. So, so since chart type, so if I select, let's say, um, if I go a little bit up, so if I select state, right, it goes to uh, this binding, it picks up the value of chart type for state selection, which is choropleth, and then that is replaced as, as the value for the visualization type property for that particular step, and that's how the binding um, Binding, uh, binding is implemented uh, you know, to control the chart type on your dashboard. So that's about it. And then at the very bottom on this dashboard, we have also created, um, um, we have also provided a link in case you want to learn more about this use case. You can go to this link, and there is a more information available uh, you know, in more detail uh, if you would like to know about that. So that's all about this dashboard. Uh, let me switch back to the presentation. Um, so the key here is that everything that Serenjit just showed was a Einstein analytics dashboard built for learning purposes. That was actually a dashboard we just saw with some charting functionality on the left, and then he just put a bunch of text on the, uh, on the left-hand side to kind of explain what's going on. Yeah. And the key, the key here is that um, you get to take the session home with you. So for the next week, week and a half, this is a good time to take a picture, because um, you can actually log in just like Serenjit did to one of, our, one of our demo orgs, you can pull up that same exact dashboard. And he, you just saw on the left-hand side, there was a drop-down with six or seven bindings use cases. He just walked through a couple of them. But you can take your time and walk through every single one of them, see how it works on the right-hand side, and then see the underlying code on the left-hand side that generated that behavior. So this is going to be a great learning tool to get you started when you're doing bindings. Right. And also, please don't. Uh, I also want to want to take a moment to introduce you all to this Einstein Analytics Learning Adventure app. So you, it, it 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 just went live on App Exchange last week. You can download that, and uh, you can learn a lot of other things other than just binding. So it it guides you how to choose the you know right visualization on your dashboards, and there is so much uh, more to that. So you should be able to download and install it in your instance. Um, and then I I just wanted to. Uh, towards the end of the presentation, I wanted to show you, uh, you know, if you want to, if you, if, you, if you want to download the code for this dashboard. So you simply click on this button. It'll take you to another dashboard. Uh, you need to follow these instructions to first create the data set, export it, create the data set, and then just copy this dashboard JSON code and uh, create the dashboard in your org. That's about it. Uh, yeah. We'll take any questions. OK. Uh, one, last, uh, one last call to action, too. It just so happens that the uh, Einstein Analytics keynote is uh, on Moscone West, third floor, in 10 minutes. So that would be a great time to learn more if you're interested in learning more yeah, about the up-to-date capabilities. Yeah.
Um, anyway, I think we're about out of time, but we'll stay here for the next 10 minutes before the keynote. So if any of you have questions, come find us afterwards. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, everyone.